Thank you very much for joining us. Let's check in now with Eric Osterhaus at Paragon Ag Advisors, Silver Lake, Kansas. Eric, we've got the world supply and demand estimates behind us, but I really don't think that carries as much weight until after we get through January and get some more of this crop harvested. I do want to focus on this cattle market. <laughs> what more can you say about it? It's just been a wild on fire market. And if you go by the futures, well, I want to back up here for just a moment. If you look at the fundamentals, um, box beef continues to rocket higher with no end in sight. Cash seems to be uh, following what's going on on the uh, futures market. You know, uh, we, we finally converged there at the end of October in pretty good, pretty good shape. And now uh, here we are again, trading solid numbers here for this cash cattle trade. The futures are still leading the cash. Uh, we had feeder cattle get within just a stone throw of 150. So you got to wonder, is a big correction in the works for this market the further out we go? Well, certainly, you know, you look at the charts. I mean, I'll start there first. I mean, the fundamentals really have been very supportive. But you look at the charts and you just see this... Uh, this nice move from the, the lower left to the upper right type of chart here in the last three months, uh, you know you're certainly set up for the potential of at least just a healthy correction. Because even in bullish markets, um, straight up is uh, not sustainable for the, long, for the long term. And so even if you want to be friendly to cattle markets, even just some sort of a healthy setback isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't change the, the basic fundamentals that are out there. And, and so I would be aware that there is the potential for that. People are starting to look for it. It's coming up in more conversations. Uh, I'm seeing a, a little bit more chatter out there regarding, hey, are we getting close to a setback uh, or a correction? And, and sometimes all that chatter is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, so I, I don't know until we see something change on the fundamental side, but uh, again, you, you look at some of those fundamental news like the box beef as an example, it's just being on fire as well and really supporting the market. Can a, a deal with China, and the reason I bring this up is because there was a lot of chatter about that in the market on Thursday. Um, can a deal with China also boost even further this cattle market? Um, a, because of the demand for protein, but B, I keep hearing more and more stories that China might be interested in buying quite a bit of beef. Well, certainly. I mean, there. I think there's a lot of background interest in that. I mean, I think the talk of China and the deal, uh, I mean, it's been obviously talked to death. So I don't think it's at the forefront, actually, what's going on the cattle, which to me makes it even more exciting, I guess, in that regard, is that if we do manage to ink something in December and our cattle market manages to hold together until then, uh, certainly I think that's supportive. And, um, you know, time will tell, of course, as to whether or not we get the, the deal done there. But, you know, if you look at the cattle market, it makes it even more remarkable considering, you know, our exports in regard to beef in the last month or so has not been stellar. So we've managed to stage this even without any of that support from the export side. Uh, that's a very good point. And that was evident in the export sales numbers that were out on Thursday um, for, for beef uh, around 10 to 12,000 metric ton. All right, if somebody wants to contact you at Paragon Ag Advisors, what's the best way to do it? Uh, give us a ring, 888-452-8751. All right, Eric, thank you very much. Eric Osterhaus here on the program. Don't go anywhere, though. More is coming up. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this.